Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. I just purchased a brand new battery. It's massive. This is the Ruixu Lithi 216. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now this battery is a little bit different than normal wall mounted lithium iron phosphate batteries because it actually has wheels on the bottom so you can move it around as needed. Now it also has a fancy touch screen so let's take a closer look. The first thing you'll notice as you look at the screen is this large battery percentage. It also has this state of charge indicator that goes around and it fills up as it gets near 100%. You have the battery voltage and the current going in and out and that sums up your power here. We're currently charging at 0.63 kilowatts or 630 watts. You see the amount of batteries that you have connected together. You can see I just have one here. You have an info option and a setting option and also the time date at the top. Now I specifically chose this battery because of the form factor. It has a tall, narrow design. Since I don't have much space in this storage room, I wanted something that just tucks up against the wall. And instead of going with a normal server rack battery setup, it takes up a lot of space on the floor. This is much better for my setup. This lithium iron phosphate battery has a nominal voltage of 51.2 volts rated at 314 amp hours for a total capacity over 16 kilowatt hours or 16,000 watt hours. It is very hefty, comes in at 320 pounds and getting this into my basement was quite the struggle. I actually had to slide it down a couple unistrep bars so I could get it down my stairs. Now, once I opened it up, I was very happy with how this thing was packaged. Now this battery can be used in multiple environments. For example, it is IP65 rated for indoor or outdoor use, and it also has built-in heaters so that if you wanna use this outdoors or in some sort of off-grid setup where the temperature can drop, anytime it drops below 41 degrees, the internal heaters will kick on and keep the battery at a warm state so you can charge it up. Now another reason I went with this battery is because it utilizes these quick snap connectors that don't require any tools that allow you to connect up everything within a few minutes. Now this is just a temporary setup that I set up yesterday. Let me walk you through how it's all configured together. Now if you look on this side of the battery, you have your main positive and negative terminal, and below that you have a circuit breaker. Now those main cables connect right up into these bus bars. Now these are 600 amp bus bars available on Ruixu's website. They allow you to connect up batteries in parallel or connect up to an inverter. Now I have two different pigtails coming off these. One is connected up to a solar charge controller and I'm charging this at around 700 watts. The other pigtail right here is for charging batteries or power stations that I'm testing. For example, I can connect it up to the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra to get even longer run times. Now I purchased two of these batteries. I know that they are very expensive, so if you wanted to go with a large battery like this, this is much more cost effective than buying these batteries on their own. Now, if you check out Ruixu's website, the Lithi 216 is currently priced at $33.99 or right around 21 cents per watt hour. So it's actually competitively priced for the feature set of the battery. Now to be fully transparent, I did purchase this battery with my own money, but because I was going to be documenting and testing the battery through my videos, Ruixu did agree to give me a slight discount and free shipping on the battery. Now let's go through some of the basic specifications on this battery. Once again, it's the Lithi 216 from Ruixu. It's the IP65 outdoor rated self-heating and 16 kilowatt hour battery. Now, if you look at the max charge current, it's 200 amps recommended and the max discharge current is 200 amps, but they do allow a peak discharge current for a small amount of time. So 240 amps for 15 seconds or 360 amps for one second. Now for the cycle life, if you have an 80% depth of discharge, you're looking at 9,500 cycles and that's about 15 years of daily consistent use. So really long there. Looking at the dimensions of the battery in millimeters and inches, also the weight is 320 pounds or 145 kilograms. And there are 16 lithium iron phosphate batteries wired together in series on this battery. Now it is pending UL listing. Hopefully within uh, you know, a couple months or even less than that, we should have it UL listed and it does have a 10 year warranty. Now, if the heaters do turn on, it's gonna pull around a 480 watts and that will be anytime the battery is charging under 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's go over just some of the basic features here. So it does have the onboard five inch touchscreen. It does have a fire extinguisher built in if there are any issues there. It has the quick plugs that are good for 250 amps. It has four Fuma wheels and wall anchors so it doesn't tip over. 
There is a BMS inspection area where you can replace the fuse on the negative line. And it does mention that there's protection on both the positive and negative. The positive has a circuit breaker. There are two balancing modes within the settings for this unit, and it does have the electric coating on the battery for the IP65 rating. So lots of features for this battery. Now there's a bunch of other stuff that I could cover, including tests. Kind of just gave an overview because this is a first glance video, but I do plan to do a future video. So if you guys are interested in certain tests or things you'd like to see, throw a comment down below. Also, if you are interested in picking this up, I've been very impressed with the build quality and I'm gonna try to get a discount code from Ruixu. So I'll include that down in the video description if I happen to get one. You know, I'm excited to test this out. I'm also excited to get a 240 volt split phase inverter. Eventually, I haven't decided on the model or brand yet, but now that I have something like this, I can get an inverter set up and then we can compare a plug and play setup versus a DIY setup to see which one is better, which one offers more value, and really how hard is this versus just setting that up. I'm really excited, hopefully you guys are too. If you guys like the content, please smash the thumbs up button. I'll recommend a couple other videos that you guys can check out. Once again, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.